Goatee has access to six tuners to synchro on the opponent's turn. We have three Hop Air Squadron, three Zep Ruby of the Goatee. The release of Sykes Moonlight of the Goatee will bring this to nine copies. We're gonna need some bodies to synchro summon with these tuners that can summon themselves on the opponent's turn. The probability of getting a body on the field with a tuner is about 34%. This increases to 44% when you count cards that draw two cards. On the opponent's turn, we can summon Fire Attacker, which lets us draw two cards if our opponent adds a card to their hand except by drawing it. And Fantastical Dragon, which lets us draw two cards if our opponent has a Link Monster on the field. Because the probability of doing a Synchro on the opponent's turn on turn zero is not very high, it's not really something you want to rely on by choosing to go second. So I choose to go first if I win the coin flip, and I have Sekka's Light as well, so that's another way to draw cards to increase the consistency. And because Sekka's Light banishes itself from the graveyard to let you draw another card, it's going to increase the probability of you drawing into Shifter, and your graveyard will be empty, so you'll be able to activate Shifter. Doing a turn zero deep beyond is going to be a lot less likely. It's going to require you to draw both Zep and Hop Ear and get them both on the field. With Sykes, the probability will go up just a little, but if you do draw a hand that does get you to deep beyond on turn zero, there's really nothing your opponent can do to stop it. It's pretty much an automatic win. Doodle doodle do. Prank Kids is back now that Meow Meow is unlimited again. So we're up against Adventure Prank Kids. And we have Rescue Ace Impulse in the hand and Snopios, so we'll be able to get a body on the board. But we don't have a tuner, so we're gonna need Rescue Ace to resolve. The opponent activates a monster effect on the field. We'll special summon our Rescue Ace Fire Attacker from the deck by activating Rescue Ace Impulse, and it resolves. So Fire Attacker is now on the field. The opponent added a card from the graveyard to the hand so we can activate Rescue Ace Fire Attacker. And we'll have to discard one card. We'll discard one of our tuners. We drew into Hop Ear, so we'll be able to Synchro Summon on the opponent's turn. Fire Attacker is bounced back to the hand. We'll activate Nibiru to force Griffin Rider to negate it. That way we'll be able to special summon our Bistial from the hand by banishing the Nib from the graveyard. We'll activate the effect of Bistial on summon and the opponent is going to Ash the Search. Now we'll activate Hop Ear, targeting the Bistial and special summoning the Hop Ear. So we'll Synchro Summon into a level eight Synchro. We're gonna Synchro into a Cell Synchro Stardust Dragon. On summon, a Cell Stinker Stardust Dragon will be able to special summon a level 2 tuner from the graveyard. And because we discarded a Paces, we'll be able to bring Paces back. Now we can activate the effect of Paces and Synchro with the Cell Stinker Stardust Dragon into our Goatee of the Deep Beyond, activate its effect, and banish the entire field. Turn 0 Goatee just feels so good. Retaliating Sea is another turn 0 body that we can put on the board. It's level 4. It can only special summon if your opponent activates a spell that special summons a monster. Pretty much every meta deck has a spell that's usually searchable that can special summon a monster. Everything except like Labyrinth and Super Heavy Samurai. If Retaliating Sea is summoned this way, while it is face up on the field, any card sent to the graveyard will be banished instead. So it's like another dimensional shifter. So the opponent activated a spell that summoned a monster, and now it's going to be banished instead of going to the graveyard. Since they can't send any cards to the graveyard, this is going to stop Snake Eyes from being able to play the game, unless they draw Spoils of Subversion to place Retaliating Sea in the Spell and Trap Zone. The opponent's going to Exe Summon into a Liraless Assembled Nightingale and pass their turn. Detached Exe Materials will still be banished while Retaliating Sea is on the field. Now we're going to normal summon our tuner. The opponent will be able to special summon Flame Bird using their field spell. And we're going to banish Paces to special summon our tuner. And synchro into our Arian Post with Zep and Silent Angler. If we didn't draw Silent Angler, then we would just synchro with Retaliating Sea. The Eggsy will detach one material to protect itself from battle, so we got rid of one of their Snake Eye monsters. Now Retaliating Sea is not going to last you more than one turn because the opponent can activate Flameberg to move any monster from the field or graveyard into the Spell and Trap Zone. So on the main phase one, the opponent's going to do exactly that, target the Retaliating Sea. We'll activate Paces. Using Paces and Retaliating Sea, we'll be able to Synchro Summon into our Arian Post and get another search with Arian Post. And when Retaliating Sea is sent to the graveyard, we can activate its effect to search for a Insect Monster with 
with 1500 or less attack, so using Arian Post will banish Zep, and with Retaliating C will add Max C to the hand. With the Zep banished, we'll Special Summon it. Using Zep and our Arian Post, we'll Synchro Summon into a level 8 fish. We're gonna go into Askan. Arian Post activates in the graveyard. Askan banishes the back row in itself. The opponent flips over across that designator. We'll activate Max C to chain to that cross that designator. And then activate Paces to synchro with our Askan. So it goes to the graveyard. This is going to give us our Deep Beyond. And we still have Hoppier in the hand. And we're going to be able to search for Snopios using Arian Post. So we're still going to be able to synchro again. So Max C resolves. Cross that designator fizzles. Askan banishes. And Arian Post adds a Snopios to the hand. And Deep Beyond will wipe the board. The opponent's gonna chain Assembled Nightingale, which will do absolutely nothing. And there goes the field. They're gonna normal summon Snake Eyes Popular and search for Subversion. So that's it for this replay. Retaliating C is a really great card, being functional as both Dimensional Shifter and a searchable Max C. One of my favorite things to do in turn zero goatee is to summon Rudy Rose Dragon, which can banish all cards in both players' graveyards. This is especially useful in graveyard-centric meta, with transaction rollback released. So many people are now running graveyard pile decks. So Rescue Ace Impulse just got negated by Ash. It was more important for us to activate Rescue Ace first, since we do have Max C, and Max C is going to be more important to resolve here. The opponent activates a spell to special summon a monster. We respond with Max C. So now we're going to get some draws. We have Hoppier and Snopios in the hand, so we're going to be able to draw into some cards here and still be able to synchro on the opponent's turn. The opponent will search for Snake Eyes Poplar and special summon it. Using Poplar, they're going to search for Divine Temple. They'll activate the field spell. They will place Flameberg in the Spell and Trap Zone and try to pass their turn. We'll activate Snopios to special summon Snopios. And we're going to target the Snake Eye Ashen with our Snopios. The Field Spell will now let them special summon Flameberg from the Spell and Trap Zone. They will tribute my Snopios for a Kurikara. We're going to get another draw from Maxi. The opponent probably thinks they can play into the Maxi challenge because they got rid of Snopios. A standard goatee deck would have been severely hurt by having their only Snopios in the graveyard, but we're not playing a standard goatee deck. We have multiple copies of our Snopios and tuners. Now we're going to activate that Nibiru, tribute the entire field, and that's going to end their turn. We drew into a Retaliating Sea in a second hop here, and we have Shark Kraken. Shark Kraken is just a meme. It's not really something you want in your deck over something like Lee Fish or Silent Angler to combo with your tuners. I just had it in there for fun. So now we're going to normal summon Retaliating C, synchro with Paces into our Aryan pose. And because Retaliating C was sent to the graveyard from the field, we can use it to add Max C. And Snopios will activate on the field to banish a Shift from the deck. Shark Raken and Paces would have only given us Aryan pose, but with Paces and a level 4 monster like Silent Angler, or in this case Retaliating C, we would get Aryan Post with one or two tuners banished. So we're in a pretty good position here. We have Hop Ear, we have Gamma, we have Max C, and now we have Shift with Aryan Post on the field. So we're gonna activate our Max C in response to the field spell. The field spell will let them special summon their Flame Bird from the spell and trap zone. And with Max C, we're gonna draw a card. So I just drew into a Ready Fusion. Ready Fusion was a card that I was using to increase the consistency of this deck going first before I realized Sekka's Light could be used in this deck. I do prefer Sekka's Light just because it does banish itself from the graveyard, allowing me to use Dimensional Shifter. In the graveyard, we're gonna activate Aryan Post, and on the field, we'll chain Askan to banish Flamebird. So Askan will resolve banishing Flamebird in itself. We'll activate Aryan Post to banish Snopios and add Zep to the hand. And the Banish Zone will activate both Askan and Snopios to banish two of our tuners, both Paces and Shift. So we can add Snopios to the hand and special summon Askan from the Banish Zone. The opponent's going to activate their Subversion spell targeting the Askan to move into the Spell and Drop Zone. But we don't want that to happen. We're going to go into Hoppier with our Askan. So we can synchro into Rudy Rose Dragon and banish everything in the graveyard and both players' graveyards. 
We didn't have to summon Rudy Rose. Without Hop Air, we can't summon Deep Beyond with our Askan and Zep in the hand. But we have card advantage because they took the maxi challenge. And without the spells and Dial Bell Star in their graveyard, they're not going to be able to draw cards on following turns. So we hurt their grind game. And now we're going to send them into the Shadow Realms. We just drew into Dimensional Shifter and the graveyard is empty. The opponent activates a spell and we're going to chain Dimensional Shifter. Now any card sent to the graveyard will be banished, which will banish their spell on resolution. So there it goes. And now we can activate Snopios, banish into Tuner. Activate Snopios to target the Snake Eye Ashen. Activate Zep to special summon Zep. With Zep and Snopios, we will special summon White Aura Whale. White Aura Whale will destroy all their attack position monsters, sending all of them to the Shadow Realm. And that's going to end their turn. So normally people would surrender here, but it looks like the opponent is coping really hard here. So on our standby phase, we're going to get Pacey's back. They'll activate the field spell in response to special summon Diet Bell Star. On summon of Diet Bell Star, they will place one spell from the deck onto the field. It's still the standby phase, so we're also going to bring back our shift from the banished zone. On the main phase one, we'll synchro with White Aura Whale and Pacey's into our level 10 synchro monster, Baron De Floor. This will protect us from Nibiru if they happen to have it in their hand. And now we'll activate the fusion spell and with rare fish and shift we will synchro summon into our Aryan post we don't have to activate the effective Aryan post here since we have all of our tuners banished anyway baron will destroy their diabell star and will go in for the kill baron swings in and now rudy rose for the win